Hey guys, I'm Sonika. In today's video, we are going to compare my Nikon Coolpix P500, a small sensor super zoom camera, to another popular bridge camera, uh, the Canon PowerShot A6 620HS. So let's get started. Please subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell icon to get notified whenever I am on YouTube. Thank you. Hey guys, I am Sonika. Welcome to my channel which is all about photography, travel, vlogging, cameras and I put out new photography tutorials every Wednesday for you guys. So if you want new photography tips and tricks from me every Wednesday, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell icon. And today we are going to compare the Nikon Coolpix P500 with the Canon PowerShot SX620 HS. So we are going to score both these cameras based on their specs like shooting speed, sensor size, optical zoom etc. And see which camera is better or where. So this camera with the best score will obviously win. So let the games begin. cameras have the same sensor size, 1 by 2.3 inch sized VSI CMOS sensor. But the P500 gives me 16 megapixels and the SX620 gives me 20 megapixels. So the image resolution of the SX620 is obviously higher than the P500. So you open with a point. The price of the B500 is around Rs. 17,130 rupees and the SX620 costs me around Rs. 17,495 rupees. Now since they are in the same range between 17 to 18,000, we will give a point to both. The optical zoom of the B500 is 40x that is equivalent to around 900mm in 35mm film terms and the optical zoom of the SX620 HS is 25x that is equivalent to 625mm. So the B500 gives me more flexible focal coverage. The B500 can shoot 7 full resolution images at a shooting speed of 7.4 fps and the shooting speed of the SX620 is 2.5 fps. So the B500 is 4.9 frames faster. The B500 has a tilting screen. Its screen cannot swivel to the side but it can tilt in such a way so it's very useful for high angle, low angle shots but the screen of the SX620 is fixed, it cannot move at all. The SX620 is clearly smaller of the two cameras, it is 17mm narrower, 21mm shorter and 67mm thinner than the P500. It weighs around 182 grams as opposed to 541 grams by the P500. So it's more compact and travel friendly especially for long walking tours. With a single charge the P500 gives me around 600 shots and the SX620 gives me 200 95 shots. So that's 305 more shots by the B500. The B500 gives me Bluetooth connectivity also that makes it very easy for me to connect my camera to my mobile and other devices. Another useful feature in the B500 is its manual exposure which allows me to set its brightness, hue and vividness manually. This feature is lacking in the SX620. The minimum aperture of the B500 at its widest focal length of 23mm is f3. And 
SX620 is minimum aperture at its widest focal length of 25 mm is f 3.2. So the P500 gives me 2 mm wider coverage and at f3 it is faster at its widest end. Now guys we are going to talk about the common features between these two cameras. Now since they are common we won't score them but in case you want to buy any of these cameras you need to know them. Um, both cameras have somewhat similar image stabilization, inbuilt flash, face detection focus, 1080p video recording capacity, LCD screen resolution of 921k dots and Wi-Fi and mobile connectivity. Both cameras don't have GPS plus no touchscreen capabilities, no shoe for external flash, no viewfinder, no raw support, no manual mode and no microphone or headphone jack. So guys, based on the score, the P500 is the clear winner, but this time the competition was a bit tough I guess. The P500 is better because it gives me more optical zoom, more shooting speed, better battery life, Bluetooth, manual exposure and a tilting screen. Uh, but the SX620 uh, is also a great camera, it's lightweight and has more effective megapixels. So the choice is yours guys, but in my opinion, the P500 is the better camera out of these two. So guys, this was a detailed comparison between the Nikon Coolpix P500 and Canon PowerShot A6 620 HS. And I hope uh, my video will help you in your buying decision in case you are confused between these two cameras. And I hope my video cleared your doubts regarding these cameras in general. If you have any suggestions, if you want me to compare any two cameras that you are confused between, please leave them down below guys, they are very useful to me. And if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Leave a comment down below about what you want to watch next on my channel. Share this video with your friends and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also turn on the bell icon to be notified whenever I post new videos. Here is my previous camera comparison and here is a playlist that plays all my camera comparisons. Please go check these videos out guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more such videos every Wednesday on my channel. Bye.